Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I recently did a video on the alterations that I make the flipping jigs right out of the package. I truly believe that a few simple alterations can drastically improve the performance of your jigs, which then increases the number of bites that you get, increases the number of fish that you hook up with, and therefore you catch a few additional fish. And when I did that video, I got a lot of questions from viewers regarding swim jigs. Do I make the same sort of alterations to my swim jigs right out of the package? And the answer to that is absolutely yes I do, to the point where I actually feel like the alterations to the swim jigs are more important and have a bigger effect on the bait's performance than the alterations I make to a flipping jig. So we're gonna talk about that today. I'm gonna to show you how to make some simple alterations to a dirty jig swim jig that will improve the performance and allow you to put a few extra fish in the boat. Before I get into that, I do wanna remind you guys that I do a bunch of lake breakdowns. So if you've got a lake in your area that you want a little bit of help with, check out these lake breakdowns where we give 40 waypoints for a bunch of different uh, locations throughout the lake. Uh, it's geared specifically towards specific seasons of the year. So it's a really good way to get a little bit of help. If I haven't already done one for your local lake, you can request a personal lake breakdown. All of that is on the Fish the Moment website. I'll put the link in the video description. Also, for those of you that are looking to purchase some tackle, it's very much appreciated if you use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link, which is in the video description. Every cent from that comes right back to the channel and helps to go out to create more content for you guys. So let's talk about the alterations that I make on a Dirty Jig Swim Jig. This is a brand new one out of the package. This is the Chartreuse Shad, a 3 8 ounce, one of my favorites. So like I said before, jig companies, jig manufacturers, will produce a jig that is perfectly good right out of the package. But there are a few changes that I like to make to my swim jigs to improve the performance. You know, specifically with the dirty jigs, they like to leave their skirts full size as well as full length so that the angler can alter them based on the conditions that they wanna meet. For me, basically, one of the first things I'll do is I will trim the skirt up just a little bit I like to have it no more than a half inch under the bottom of the hook. So I'm going to do it in a manner where I'm not going straight across, but I'm just gonna taper it a little bit. So I'm gonna trim it up just a little bit. And then when I get to the sides, I'm actually gonna come up the sides more. I just like my skirt to taper down into the trailer tail. So you kinda gotta go around all the sides of it just like that. Now, so I've got a tapered skirt. You can see it kind of tapers down. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove a lot of the bottom skirt material. So if I were to turn this over, you can see you've got your skirt collar right in the middle of the bait, and you've got a top skirt and a bottom skirt. The bottom skirt just tends to add bulk to your bait. You don't get much movement because it's kind of pinched against the bait, pinched against the trailer. So I remove about half of that material. I don't want all of that bulk. I actually wanna create more of a translucent bait, which to me looks a lot more natural. So I'm just gonna go in no particular manner around the bait and I'm cutting off, I don't know, a half of it at least. So in this case, you can see I don't have much skirt material left. But what happens is when I drop the top skirt down, I have a much more translucent bait where the skirt material is going to flow better in the water. What you've done is you've created more room for the, the skirt material to actually flow and therefore give off more vibration, give off a better swimming effect. It really looks better in the water if you trim up your skirts. So that's what I'll do with my skirt right there. You can see I've tapered it, thinned it up, shortened it up, at that point, I'll move on to my weed guard. Now, a swim jig is not the same as a flipping jig, meaning you don't need as much of a weed guard because generally speaking, you're not flipping into the thickest stuff that you can find. So I'll do a couple of things here. The first thing I'm gonna do is you can see the weed guard is a little bit long in my opinion. It extends past the barb of the hook I don't want that. I want it to be just short of the barb of the hook. 
So in this case, looking at it, we're talking about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to cut it down about an eighth of an inch. All right, so I've trimmed it up. You can see it's basically just short of the, the barb or the hook. That's exactly where I want it. Now, again, the weed guard's a little stiff for what I would like because I'm going to be swimming this through cover, not getting it buried down in the cover. So I'm going to trim off uh, probably about five strands from the bottom. So I've separated a bunch of strands at the bottom and I've just cut them off. So you can see, hopefully you can see where those five strands are down at the bottom. Now, the reason I do that, there's a bunch of different thoughts on this. Some people say you can just pull them right out. You can grab the strand with pliers, pluck them out. You can do that, but it does a couple of things that I don't like. One, you potentially can pull the whole, the whole uh, grouping of weed guard out, which is not what I wanna do. And two, if you pull them out from the base, you leave a hole at the base. So you're, you're over time, your brush guard can actually drop down into that hole, which changes the angle of the, of the weed guard in itself. So I wanna leave that material there so nothing moves. I also like to leave it there so it gives a little bit of support to the bristles that are remaining, meaning it's got bottom support down here, but it's still very soft now at the top because we've removed some material. So that's what I do with the, the brush guard. I also will fan it out a little bit, not a ton, but a little bit. So it's like that. If you fan it out too much, what, what you end up doing with a bait where you're retrieving it, so it's a swim bait, right? You're retrieving it through the water column. It can actually cause your bait to roll. So if I really fan this out, it, it kind of prevents it from being super aerodynamic. But in this case, I still fan it out a little bit just so you get better hookups from that standpoint. The next step is to, is to open the, uh, the hook up a little bit. So these are very stout hooks, but I'm just gonna pull on it just a little bit. I'm talking about raising the hook point up about a degree. You know, I'm really just trying to increase my hookups without weakening the hook. Meaning if you open it too much, you'll, you'll weaken the hook. I'm doing it just enough so that my hook point is barely up a little bit. That will make it much more sticky in the fish's mouth and you'll get better hookups. So that's the alterations that I'll make to the swim jig. Now, you also got to think about your trailer. So the trailer that, that you want to use should fit the bait. Now, in this case, one of my favorite trailers is a grass pig, a Berkeley grass pig, or a Reaction Innovations uh, skinny dipper. The thing is, if I were just to put this on the bait itself, it's too long, it's too bulky. This is a five inch bait. What I'm gonna do is trim that down. So I'm gonna cut the head of this off just straight across, but when I cut it straight across, I don't wanna have that flush blunt edge. So what I do is I come up on an angle on the bottom, so I've got a little bit of a lip, and then I'll thread it on my bait. And what that does is it just kind of allows the water to flow through that bait a little bit better. And I'll thread that up and on and we'll get our finished product. All right, so there's our finished product. Get the skirt all pretty for you. So you can see a nice compact profile just a shortened up bait. My skirt is not gonna reach the tail. If your skirt material is hitting the tail, at that point, that's gonna alter the movement to the tail. It can very much prevent the action of the bait. And what I'm going for here is a trailer on a swim jig that's gonna create some movement. Now you gotta keep in mind, a swim jig is not like a vibrating jig or a spinner bait where you've got something built into that bait to create wiggle or vibration. A swim jig, if you don't do anything to it and you use a straight tailed trailer, you'll have a bait that doesn't do anything. Maybe you want that, but in most cases, I'm looking for a bait that's going to generate some vibration, some movement. So a boot tail swimmer is a great, a great way to do that. What it does is it creates some rocking motion. You can also use some cross style baits or some baits that have flappers to it. That'll create some vibration. But generally speaking on my swim jigs, 
I'm going for something that has some movement. And a boot tail tra uh, trailer is great. Some of my favorite trailers, the Grass Pig's great, the Skinny Dipper is great. Uh, the Berkeley, the Deal is another really good one. A lot of people like to throw some of the smaller grubs, like a Boss Grub or a Menace Grub. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different baits you can throw. I like to put a Pit Boss on it. You're looking for something that will impart some action because the only two ways you can create action with a swim jig is either through your trailer or through your rod tip. And in both cases, they both work great, but I like to have a trailer that imparts a little bit of action. And this grass pig is a really good way to do it. But that's our finished product. You can see we've thinned the skirt up, shortened it up, created a much more translucent profile. We've, we've made some adjustments to our weed guard, opened the hook up a little bit, trimmed the trailer up to fit the bait. And that's our finished product. That bait will go out and catch me some fish on the river. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If there are other things that you do to your swim jigs right out of the package, please put in the comment section so we can learn from you as well. Otherwise, guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. We'll have a new one coming tomorrow for you.